everyone, welcome to lesson three of module four's cyberspace cybersecurity satellite hacking course. In this lesson, we're going to be talking more about the defensive side of things. So we'll be listing over ways you can detect attacks and mitigate those attacks with a couple of strategies. So a brief lesson overview. Firstly, we're going to be understanding threat modeling within a space-based environment. Then we're going to be doing one lab to detect for GNSS spoofing attacks. If you recall, in the first lesson of this module, we went over how you can simulate a GNSS spoofing attack. Now we're going to flip to the other side of the coin and cover how we're going to be de detecting for them. And then lastly, we're going to be analyzing uh, satellite attacks with a threat modeling framework called SPARTA. All right. So a little bit about satellite attack detection. Space system cyber resiliency is really important for protecting space systems. And I listed out four of the most common attacks. For jamming, there's many ways you can detect an attack, but it typically involves locating a radio frequency, so performing some kind of signals intelligence. Um, and then GPS interference. So if there's an interference with GNSS satellites, for example, maybe the downlink is being jammed. Uh, examples of this will be the Spire's GPS radio occlusion, which measures the RF characteristics inside the Earth's atmosphere. Brief dropping attack in in detection involves enhanced encryption and modulation techniques to make decoding more difficult. Since eavesdropping is the ability for a hacker to sneak their way into a communication link and get data, a better way of defending it is just to make it more encrypted. So hackers have a hard time reverse engineering that packet data. Next up for hijacking signal, you can combine a range of techniques such as signal monitoring, telemetry analysis, and anomaly detection. So monitoring for malicious signals, um, analyzing telemetry packets, so looking through like um, commands being sent, monitoring sensor values, monitoring subsystem values, making sure they're okay, and um, detecting for any anomalies within that data. And then control, just again, signal monitoring, uh, performing forensics, um, specifically like on data formats or file formats that are being um, log to make sure everything is okay and there's no hacker on board. And lastly, fingerprinting of media, making sure um, media is up to date and um, properly categorized. So if anyone were to intrude in the satellite, you would know. So let's talk a little bit about threat models. A threat model, you might have already seen this, is a model including details about potential threats and vulnerabilities to a system alongside appropriate countermeasures. So um, a common example I like to use is the Batman threat model. So you can see here, it lists out um, all his assets. So like Batcave, Alfred, emails, texts, and then it lists out the threats. Um, so here we have the police, Joker, and journalists. And then you see countermeasures. Um, security system, high location encryption, and it shows the relationship between um, what he wants to protect, the mitigation countermeasures, and the, the threats. And it marks the relationship between them using these lines here and the degree of risk. So we can apply the same kind of framework to set satellite systems or any kind of spacecraft within space. So like I mentioned before, there's four main categories. There's the space segment, the user segment, the link segment, and the ground segment. For the space segment, there's a lot of onboard vulnerabilities, especially for things such like as subsystem compromisation or onboard computers or the internal communication components of the satellite. For the user segment, um, we have things um, such as like the interruption of commercial services, which could result from an attack specifically on commercial-based satellite systems like satellite TV, satellite-based like radio calls, um, and so forth. Then we have the link segment, so the uplink and the downlink um, are the main threats there, so jamming, spoofing, pretty much any communication attack. 
And then the ground segment. The ground segment is critical because it connects everything together. And I would say it is the most vulnerable because since it connects everything, you really want to make sure the ground segment works. So these are um, target to a wide range of attacks. So I have an example threat model of the OPSAT. We're going to be covering this a little bit further in the lab that we do. But you can see here that they outlined um, pretty much in every component of the satellite. And then they walk you through a possible threat model of it using the attack path and a hierarchy structure. So here we have the satellite and then they broke up the satellite into um, two component categories. So the bus of the satellite, so the internal communication and then the payload. So things that are being uploaded to the satellite such as code, commands and so forth. Um, so the bus, they said, is vulnerable to arbitrary code execution, control data interaction. They said the payload is vulnerable to denial of service and payload data interaction, which makes sense. For the satellite, um, the main threats they listed are a seizure of control, denial of service, and malicious data interaction. And they listed out the relationship between these two by hierarchy, saying um, bus is part of the satellite, payload is part of the satellite. And part of the bus, we can break it down into three further categories. You have the communications, the C command data handling system, and the bus payload link. For the payload, we can break this further. We have PLCOM, um, UDHS, and PDHS. And you can see here, we, they listed out on the attack path. So for example, the bus um, an attack usually starts out with communication from the receiver. So it receives something via the receiver um, that causes it to bypass access control. And then from there, the attacker moves themselves to the TC fetcher, and then they can run a wide range of tar target attacks here, um, exploiting vulnerable TCs, dangerous TC, TC suppression, or control of data link. And then from there, they can move themselves up to compromising the bus via these two things, and then they can seize control of the satellite. Um, or another way they can do it is they can um, start from the link TC fetcher, so they can exploit a vulnerable TC interface or do any of these things, move themselves to compromising the command data handling system, compromise the bus, compromise the satellite. Same thing here, you can just follow the lines. So let's say they um, start with the PLCOM receiver, they bypass access control, they move themselves to the PD fetcher. Um, maybe they exploit one of these four things. They exploit a service information link, move themselves to the UDHS for a side channel attack. Um, or for example, they do an attack on PLCOM, move themselves to the PL PD fetcher, exploit vulnerable data processing, cause a payload data interaction within the payload that is malicious, and then um, compromise the satellite using malicious data interaction. So there's just a, it's just a general outline and a hierarchy of possible threat models, and it really helps a lot of people on the cyber side look over and audit through possible vulnerabilities so attacks like this don't actually occur.